So appreciate it, Dustin, and as always, um, appreciate you guys for attending. Um, start off with the, our summer. I thought we had a really productive summer. Um, the rest of the freshmen showed up here Father's Day uh, that Sunday, uh, came in, uh, kind of assimilated with the returning players that had been here since June 1st and uh, had high energy doing our summer workouts. And, and for me, you know, this, this phase of our program is one that's really important is that it should prepare us physically um, to be able to play uh, a full season and give us the best chance to maintain our health throughout it. Um, we also did a tremendous job in the community this summer. Our players uh, got quite a bit of community service stuff done throughout the DMV area. This is the one time we get to shift our attention to 24-7 football. I just had our first meeting last night with our players, and each year we get about 30 days out of the year where our players can spend their entire time just focusing on football. We've got a couple guys with a few things to clean up academically here the next couple of days, but you know, our training camp for us is really a unique opportunity that we get each and every year. And for us, it's important that we limit the distractions and take full advantage of these opportunities. Um, with all the new people uh, we have in our program, it's really important for us to continue to create that connectivity that we want to see uh, and that we feel like we've been able to do. Um, the players returned after a short break yesterday for our move in. Our camp uh, headquarters is over there at the hotel. Um, really business-like. Our players, you can tell, are excited. Uh, the thing that led me to be able to declare that we're now ready to compete uh, for Big Ten championships is just what I'm talking about, the players. And it'll be the point of emphasis. I like the way our locker room has come together. Uh, that player-driven culture that we've been pounding uh, for the last four years, uh, really, I think you're starting to see the fruits of, of the hard work, uh, not just by our staff, but with the, the players themselves in terms of taking ownership of this team. Um, they seem very driven, very focused, and, and, and getting and creating the right kind of habits and behaviors that allow you to play championship-level football. Um, the players and coaches in our program know what our expectations are. Um, they know that the work has to supersede the goal, and we're not going to let a goal of wanting to compete for championships get in the way of the, the type of work and the amount of work it's going to take to do that. And so that's where all of our energy will be focused on. Um, we'll learn more in the coming weeks as to who we are as we create and forge an identity as a football family for the 23 season. I'm excited about seeing just in, in terms of the players that are coming in. This now will give me a, a great idea of kind of who we will be and what type of identity we'll have. On offense, we've obviously returned in a lot of production. Um, our running back room, uh, the tight end position, as well as you know the, uh, the other positions on our team, I feel like offensively, the strength of our offense it is the experience that we'll have with the young running backs that came in and played really well for us a year ago. And though we lost a lot of production in, in terms of an experience up front in the O-line, we feel like the portal has allowed us to, to maybe uh, fill some of those gaps that have been created when you lose players to the NFL like we did a year ago. Um, our O-line, obviously, you know, losing two guys to the draft and another one, Jahari Branch, who's uh, actively on the roster, uh, shows you that that's the one area that we've got to kind of see and make some decisions quickly as you go through our depth chart because that competition there with the guys we brought in along with the returning guys uh, makes that room, uh, makes healthy competition uh, really important in that room. On defense, I think we showed a great deal of improvement. You know, the one thing that jumps out statistically for me is just how our guys were able to make the necessary adjustments from the first half to the second half as you studied us on defense, our, our defense did a really good job uh, coming out after the half and, and making the necessary adjustments. And, and Coach Williams and that defensive staff, uh, again, like I said, showed tremendous improvement um, a year ago. I love the leadership and experience that's on that side of the ball, especially on the second level with two returning starters and Bo Braid and Dante Trader. Uh, and then you add guys like Avante. Uh, Williams and, and, and Glenn Miller, who also we expect to help us as, long, as well as some of these young players that we'll bring in. But I'm really excited on that side of the ball because of the experience that we have returning. As I said, with the transfer portal, you saw, uh, you've seen a bunch of guys come uh, in. And, and for me, guys like Jordan Phillips and uh, Corey Bullock and Mike Purcell and Marcus Dumerville, uh, Jaquan Shepard, all these are names that I think you guys will get to know and really, really excited based on how they performed in the spring 
as well as how quickly they've bought into the, the standard that we've set as a program that we expect those guys to hit the ground running with us in, in, in an effort to help us prepare. Um, practice number one is later this afternoon. Really, really excited about getting a chance to get back on the grass, uh, put our hands on these guys in terms of teaching, developing, coaching. As I told our, as I told our coaches last night, you know, it's our job to take these players where they can't take themselves. And our players have really bought into the principle and philosophy that it's their team. And so it's our job now to get these guys mentally, physically uh, ready to play a long season here in the Big Ten. And we're excited about this opportunity. Um, with that, I'll open it up to whatever questions you guys may have. Uh, Emmett Siegel, Testudo Times. Coach, you've said now here and at Big Ten Media Day that you think now is the time to start competing for Big Ten championships. And you mentioned players as that difference. But more specifically, what is it specifically about the players that you have now that you think has allowed you to reach that goal or now you, you have built the program to a point where you think it's time to start competing for championships as opposed to last year? Well, I, I would say not just opposed to last year, but any of the last four years that I've been here, there's a necessary uh, developmental process that you have to go through as a team. And I think sometimes when you come in as a, a new leader, whether it's a, as a football coach or in business, that you, uh, you tend to maybe bite off a, a little more than you can chew initially. And I think for us, we always want to be honest and transparent with our team and, and with ourselves. And so for us, you know, it seems to me like a lot's been said about the declaration that now we're ready to compete for Big Ten championships. You know, for the last three, four years, I've had a ton of players uh, come to me and say, Coach, we want to talk about championships. And I said, man, until we can wor worry about taking care of the things we can control, we can't talk about championships. Well, the player-driven culture that we've been trying to instill, I think now has, has shown itself to me. It's shown itself by how they've prepared uh, going into the spring when we've had a lot of different moving parts with the portal, guys going in and guys coming out. Uh, I saw our team take the new guys in our program and kind of say, this is how we do things around here. And either you do it this way or you're not going to be around here. And to me, that's when you start seeing that type of leadership in the locker room, the football part will be easy. We've got great coaching staff uh, that, that will get these guys in the best possible positions to make plays. But what we need to see to compete for championships is the right kind of habits and behaviors. And those are the things that lead me to say what we said at the uh, Big Ten Media Day. Dave Preston, WTOP Radio in What's Washington. Up, Dave? <laughs> Good to see you, Mike. Uh, it, How are you back? Uh, it, it's rare in college football where you have somebody with so much experience back these days. What's it like for you as a coach to be able to work with someone? And it's almost as though instead of you know 100, 300 classes, you working on all different things. And how and what expect you this fall? Yeah, I mean, anytime you have the most experienced quarterback coming back in a league like ours, it uh, speaks volumes, uh, speaks volumes to the type of player I, I know he is and people that are in our building know and understand Talia to be. Uh, to be able to have a guy, I mean, he, this system, I mean, he was raised in it, you know, from the time, you know, before he got here at, at Alabama, very similar system, terminology. And to get here and to see how each year he's grown as his, in that role as a leader, that to, that to me is the, 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 the secret sauce for him because this guy has the ability to have a positive impact on others. And I've seen him really take that next step, whether it be this summer in terms of how he's kind of been out in front and demanding uh, that guys hold up to the standards that we set. Um, to me, when you have that type of leadership from that position, it gives you hope that you'll uh, have a chance to go out and play hopefully play the way that he's capable of playing consistently. Gene Wong, Washington Post. Hey, Mike, um, you mentioned the portal. You, you were able to get a couple of big playmakers and wide receiver out of there, in addition to the guys you got coming back. Kind of what do you see out of that room as you reload at that position this year? Yeah, you know, the addition of guys like Caden Prather and Tyrese Chambers, um, one, the type of kids they are, and I use those term kids, they're, they're young men, the type of young men that they are from a character standpoint. As I've said before, when we go into the portal and bring a guy in, 
it's really important for me that we know who we're bringing in and what we're getting. And with both those guys, especially Caden, because I was actively involved in his recruiting process, I knew the type of kid, person he was. And I've been really happy with what he's done. He's kind of come in and, you know, let the older guys that know the system help lead. I know Jay Sean Jones has played a tremendous role in that receiver room and kind of being the enforcer of our standard. And both those guys have come in and have worked their tails off, have assimilated, even has taken on some leadership roles. I think Tyrese has a natural ability as a leader because everything he's gotten, he's had to earn and work for. And, and those are the types of stories that when he talks to the younger players in that room, you know, that's where I see his leadership showing up. But a really talented room, a lot of unknowns, but I, I say eerily similar to what the running back room looked like a year ago. I think we'll be pleasantly surprised uh, with the production we'll get, especially out of the two newcomers. What's up, George? Good to see you. Make sure. Do that. What was important to you to bring those guys in, and in terms of distribution? <laughs> yeah, you you want to know the what's going on behind the scenes, huh? J just a touch. <laughs> Got it. Well, one very intentional with the hiring process. Um, a, a, as you guys know, the last few years we've been very fortunate that when you have success, you lose good coaches, and the coaches that have left here played a integral roles in helping us to where this foundation is set the way it is. Uh, the addition of guys like Summy and, and Josh, you know, got, you, you guys leave off a of trail Scott and here's one of the veteran guys who I think took Richmond to the one AA national championship or FCS national championship game as a young coach, uh, did a tremendous job at East Carolina. And then you throw in, you know, Zach Spavadol and Zach's experience as a young coach at Oklahoma, Houston, you know, we had some really close games a year ago that I think the experience that these guys bring will help because coming in with a lot of first time uh, division one coaches that we've had, they brought energy, they brought juice, they brought the recruiting part of it. Well, the next step for us, if we want to compete for championships is figuring out how to game plan to win close games against the better teams in our, in our uh, conference. And when you look at what Josh, what Josh has done at Michigan and you know, Kevin has done in his career. These are two veteran guys that have been in these big games and have game planned for them. And, and, and I think the experience hopefully will lend itself to where we find ways, instead of close wins, we find ways to win close games. Ed Lee with Baltimore Sun. Mike, hey, hey. going back to the declaration, how do you challenge the traditional teams like Ohio State and Penn State and then with the declaration, were you ever all worried about it putting a spotlight on the guys? Um, I think the way you, you, you challenge those teams is you, you get your players to play well. Um, most of the things, and if you followed us over the years, we very rarely worry about the opponent because it's more what we do than it is what they do. And, and it's more what, how we do it. And hopefully we do it a little better than our opponents and that's what gives you a chance to win. As far as the spotlight, I mean, you know, we, we're not shying away from it because the only expectation that really matters to us, and, and I mean this with all honesty, is the expectation we have in that building, the Jones Hill House. And I can tell you, there's nobody in there that's uh, afraid of declaring that now is the time for Maryland to become a team that competes for Big Ten championships. It's, it's part of our DNA in terms of, you know what, we're gonna go fight for everything we get. We know that it won't be given to us. And we've got a bunch of guys in that, that locker room over there that really feel strongly about now is our time to do the things and create the habits and behaviors to be a championship level program. Colin Baltimore, son. How's it Same, going, Mike? what's up? Um, you mentioned the running back room. When I asked about Roman Hemby specifically, what do you feel like is the next step for him and how important do you feel like he is to what you're trying to accomplish? Yeah, Roman, I think, and, and with all of our players, we evaluate them at the end of the year. And if there's a couple of a couple of areas in Roman's game that I think he'll be the first to tell you that we want to see is the the one on one miss, you know, making the, the the last guy miss because there were a couple runs where 
you know, it's one guy left to the defense, and you know what, we can't block all 11 if you're carrying it. So one guy you're responsible for, and I know Coach Scott has really worked hard with Roman to that third level, second level winning uh, in space. Um, you know, and Roman is the type of guy that when you tell him he needs to improve on something, he's going to do the work. Smart, tough, reliable. Um, our expectation is for us to build on uh, the type of season he had a year ago. The thing I think that's really shown itself for Roman is his leadership. Um, not a big talker, but but people in that locker room respect his work ethic, and when he talks, people listen. Uh, I'm a good inside the black and gold. Hey Coach, man. good to see you. Good to um, see you. you. You touched about uh, the defensive line and obviously the addition of Jordan Phillips, but um, having to replace all three starters and, you know, you had uh, Trey Colbert, another guy, Ty Jay Johnson, Tommy Akimbasote, both those guys coming back. So um, just with, uh, I guess, just replacing those pieces, um, I guess, what's your going into camp? Uh, what's your feel for, for the defensive line unit? Yeah, you know, the best thing about that, and if you've tracked this, which I know you do, you do a tremendous job of following us, is we rotated a bunch of players a year ago. I mean, guys like Tommy King Basote was similar to a starter in terms of how much he played. Taze played a ton of reps the last couple of years. Bringing in the Trey Colbert or Jordan Phillips help us with that void, but Coach Williams has done a great job of keeping guys fresh and, you know, guys and names that you don't hear of, like the Isaac Bunyans of the world that, uh, you know, Christian Teagues of the world. We had Greg Rose a year ago that just pop up. You know, the way, the way we play defense, uh, we have the bodies. I think you'll see some of these young players like Dylan Fontes, who came in in the, the spring, uh, early grad. You'll see his development kind of expedite itself because of the size and strength that he comes in with and being in our weight room, guys like Jordan Phillips, guys like uh, uh, Dylan Fontes have benefited from being here early. Hey, Coach, I'm Noah Trister with AP. Uh, up, Noah? Just a question, a couple off-season issues that have come up at other schools. One is the Northwestern situation with tasing. The other has been at places with kids getting suspended for gambling offenses. Do you address either of those things with your team to sort of reinforce what is and isn't acceptable, uh, I guess, in this day and age? Yeah, we're actually going through it as we speak. You know, we have a player policy manual that every summer during training camp and our team meeting at, at in the evening, we go through these things. Um, as I've told you guys before, this is a lot like raising kids. And so for you guys that have raised kids, uh, you know that you can say it until you're blue in the face, but you got to keep saying it. And so every year we address it. I think the spotlight is on it because of, you know, some of the things that have happened around the country here this summer. Uh, what you're starting to see is something that we've understood a long time is that players have voices now and uh, these voices will be heard one way or the other and so what we try to do is create a environment a family environment that you know how many people have hazed people in their family I mean you just it's not what you do and so when you create a family environment we're not saying we're better than anybody but we we're going to address it we'll continue to educate our players on the right way when we talk about development it's not just as a football player, as a student, it's, a, it's as a person as well. And we've got some programs that we, we utilize during this time of year to help reinforce those principles and values that we want. Uh, Taylor Lyon, Diamondback. Um, you on? mentioned earlier the offensive line replacing so much from last year, that turnover there. Um, just what's that challenge been like for you, just trying to find the five best guys? and. And just what have you seen out of them and what are you expecting out of that unit this season? Yeah, the challenge was the recruiting piece because we know when you lose guys that have been three, four-year starters, you know, Spencer Anderson and Jalen Duncan, as well as Jahari, were three-year starters, four-year starters for us. And we were really intentional with how we went and attacked the portal. You know, when you recruit offensive linemen, we recruit with the mindset that it takes two years, two and a half years for them to fully develop and be ready to compete especially in a league like the Big Ten. Um, and so we feel like the experience that we, we will get out of a guy like Gotti, guys like Corey Bullock, Mike Purcell, Marcus Doomerville, those, those experiences that, that they're bringing to the table and what having him, they, they have most of them here this spring, really has helped us kind of start to shape some things. Now the next 30 days will be important to find 
the best five and put them in the best possible position while developing the younger players in our programs like the Andre Roys, like the Kyle Longs, that uh, Connor Fagan, a walk-on who's really elevated himself uh, to, 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 to create the depth that we're going to need to play good football. Wayne Viner, Turp Talk. Hey, Wayne, how are you? Hey, I'm doing well. It's great. it's great to be back for football season. You've talked at length about how much of a Turp fan you've been and what that team looked like. And you look at the team photo today, and your team looks like the Terrapins again with the red jersey and the white pants. What's it mean to you to have that Terps logo back on that helmet? You know, Terp script is something, as I said before, and, and, and you know, I grew up on Terp script. And you think of the mid-'80s teams that, that had great success here, and that was right during my adolescent years where I was coming over and, and, and rooting for the Terps. It's what I, I've come to know is winning football. When, when, we, when we wore Terp script, we had great success. I was here with Coach Friesen when he reintroduced it uh, back to the program in the early 2000s. So I'm hoping that we, we, we can take some from the, what those mid-'80s teams did and those Coach Friesen teams in the early 2000s and, and wear it with pride and play with the type of pride of the, that the people who wore it before them did when they had some success here consistently. Brandon Schwartzberg, Diamondback. So, Coach. How you doing, buddy? Good, how are you? Good. Coach, you mentioned the defensive line changes and then also in the secondary losing Banks and Bennett to the NFL. But you're going to have Jay Sean and Ruben back at linebacker. How impactful is it to kind of have those quarterbacks back in the middle of that defense? Yeah, and, and you need to add Panaje Gote. Panaje has been a guy that he's coming back with a COVID year, very similar to Jay Sean Jones, that his experience and the playmaking ability that we've had at that level. You throw in a true freshman, uh, All-American, and Jay Sean Barham. Uh, Ruben Hippolyte's been playing football since he stepped on campus here for us, minus the, um, the injuries in which he, he, he's had to deal with. That, that room, to me, is the kind of the glue between the back end and the front end. And you know, I know Coach Thompson and, and Coach uh, JT are doing a tremendous job with the outside guys and the inside guys of bringing them along really, really really fast and, and it's going to be important especially for some of the designated pass rushing guys on the outside but uh, the interior linebacker group is a, a, a group that shows tremendous leadership while also has had a lot of production over the years. thrown at you in the last five years. You've had COVID. It you know, I came in with a five-year plan, and, and, and part of that was to establish a culture and a foundation that would allow us to compete for Big Ten championships and, and realistically be able to compete. And so, I'd say we're right on schedule. Um, you know, the COVID year kind of throws a, 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 a wrench into some things in terms of the development piece that we've tried to expedite with how we practice. Um, but there's no doubt I feel like we're a program that's on track with where I wanted us to be in year five. But you know what? It sounds good in the room, air conditioned room on August 1st or whatever, August 2nd now, I guess. Uh, but the next 30 days, we'll get a chance to see. Uh, we saw what a weapon special teams could be for you guys last year with, with Chad Ryland. Uh, do you have any insight, you know, I know it's obviously we're just starting fall camp, but into who maybe will step into that starting kicker role and maybe what, you know, the return game could look like for you? Yeah, I think, one, from a kicking standpoint, Colton Spangler is a guy that we had a lot of respect for. You know, he shared the position for two years. Last year kind of took it over full time, even though we used Pecorella in some – areas where he was a great at pinning people down in there. But really excited about having a veteran punter like Colton and then his athleticism. You know, that's the one thing, you know, when you got an athlete at that position and I don't feel like we've maybe done enough of attacking people in the special teams game in terms of fakes and things, but a former athlete, receiver, quarterback type guy, but he's really done a nice job punting. 
Uh, Jack Howes is the guy coming out of the clubhouse we feel um, it's his job to, to lose. Uh, we brought in some veteran guys to kind of push and compete at the position, but I've been really pleased with Jack, and I think the best thing about having Jack around a year ago was seeing the, the type of kicker Chad Ryland was and his approach and the things he did. And so excited about uh, also just, just, just seeing Jack go out and the confidence that comes along with being a kicker. The return game, because of our skill, uh, I love the guys that we got returning punts and kicks. I'd like to see that really become a big weapon for us. And it's an area where, because of the type of skill we have, should be successful for us. Thanks, guys.